Hey everybody, welcome to episode number eight of the Disc Golf Examiner podcast. I'm here today, I'm Jeff, and I'm joined with... It's Brian. Hey Jeff, how's it going? Oh, I'm doing great. And actually, we're both back from these two interviews that we did for you today. We're really excited about this project. We thought it'd be unique to interview two players in the game at different stages in the game. Uh, We have one person who just turned pro over the summer. They cashed out in their first tournament. And we have an established seasoned veteran local to the area who is always a powerhouse in local competitions. And what we want to do is interview both of them about 10, 15 minutes each. And we talk just talk about where they are, how they got started. It's a really interesting contrast between the two. Yeah, actually, uh, both of them we've covered before in in multiple tournaments. And uh, I think you'll all be familiar with them. Um, The first interview is actually with uh, Vinny Montaneri. Vinny was the professional uh, that we brought in for the Wrestlers vs. Comedians video, if you remember that. Uh, if you haven't seen that, you got to check it out on our Facebook page. Go to Disc Golf Examiner, check out our Facebook, check out our video, Wrestlers vs. Comedians. Something that we did for Grow Disc Golf Day where we basically had uh, two groups of people um, introduced to disc golf and we had a pro come in, which was Vinny, and he did a fantastic job. He's really good uh, at explaining the game, explaining what you need to do. I learned something from that video too myself. Uh, whenever he was saying, um, you know, for upshots, you want to point your thumb at the basket, which was really interesting stuff, I thought. So you're, you're always going to learn something from Vinny whenever you play with him. And we were really excited to be able to do an interview with him. Yeah, Vinny's going to be the first interview you'll hear tonight. Vinny has been playing for about three to four years. He's just cashed out in his first tournament, so he's got a monster arm. We, Brian and I watched him drive 550, almost 600 feet once. It was ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, he's really learning to control that, and it's just a powerhouse monster arm. We're going to hear from Vinny first, and then our second interview tonight is with local pro Matt Rozier. Yeah, you may have uh, remembered Matt from we did coverage of the Steel City Classic. He, we have clips of Matt all over the place. You should definitely check those out. Matt, um, if you want to see him hit some very long putts, we definitely have some video of that. So uh, definitely go back, check those things out, and you'll get an idea who Matt is. And uh, he's he's one of the great local pros that we have in the area, and um, we're really excited to be able to interview him today yeah and we're really excited about the show it's uh, it's a unique perspective it's not something we've tried before but i think you know just hearing the two players i think will give some great perspective on the game no matter where you're at so i, I think brian let's just get right into it yeah absolutely are you ready i'm ready i'm ready if you're ready let's get I guess do this let's do this Hey guys, we're back. I'm here with Jeff and Vinny Montaneri. Vinny's a local pro here in the disc, in the Pittsburgh disc golf community. Vinny, how are you doing today? Oh, I'm doing great. Great. It's good to hear from you. I'm glad we were able to get you on today. We'd like to start these things off at the beginning. So if you could uh, tell us what first got you into disc golf. Well, uh, me and my friends went down to North Carolina for vacation. It was uh, just after high school. And uh, there's a disc golf course on the campground that we were staying at. And we saw the baskets, and I'd never even heard of it before. So then uh, we went to, like, the camp office, and the guy that was there said that he had discs that we could rent. And uh, so he told us the basic rules. We rented three discs. They were three, just a Nova DX. Like a, I think it was, like, an Archangel or something like that, and a Rock and a AVR. Went out and played. It was a Fontana Hill or Fontana Village Resort, I think the course is called. And it was a ton of fun. I think I shot, it was like 22 over, if I remember right. And yeah, it was, it was a bunch of fun. Came home. On the way home, we stopped at Dick's, and I bought a Champion in of a Groove, because I saw it was fast, so I was like, oh, that'll go far. Mm-hmm. And then uh, I also bought a DX Shark. That was really light. Nice. I played a couple times that summer, but not too much. Mm-hmm. 
you know, as a new player, when you first got that champion groove, uh, how disappointed were you the first time you threw it and it went as far left as it went straight? <laughs> yeah, that was the thing. I, well, for me, I guess it went right because I'm left-handed. But yeah, the first couple times I threw it, went so far right. And I just figured, well, if I just throw this thing with 45 degrees of angle really low, it kind of goes straight. So that's kind of how I figured it out. And still like now i actually throw a lot of flex shots and that's main reason why is because that was my first disc yeah now you have the ability to throw discs like 500 plus feet in in some instances (laughs) so like whenever you first started out how far were you throwing were you better whenever you first started out like what what uh, did you find you had a natural talent for it what was it that um uh yeah well drew you to it i've always like I was a pitcher in baseball, I played outfield. I've always had like a pretty good arm, and I would say, if I remember right, I was thrown about three hundred to three fifty with that groove whenever I first started. Wow, that's not so, typical. No, yeah, was, I didn't even know how to hold it. I mean, the the first time I was thrown, I was just completely just fan grip, and it was going like two fifty. But then I saw, I watched an old instructional video, and they said something about the power grip. And first time I threw with that, it it went pretty far. I was very surprised, and. uh yeah, I don't know. I've just always been pretty talented with that, I guess. So you started about three years ago, but uh, how old are you now, Vinny? Uh, I'm 21 right now. I turned 21 in June. Yeah, you had your first time playing disc golf. That was down in North Carolina. Uh, mm-hmm. Where has disc golf taken you since you started playing with all the places you've traveled to? Oh, well, I've played there. I've, I think the furthest from home I've played other than that was Brown's Farm up in New York. And then mostly just Pittsburgh area. I played one tournament out um, by Philadelphia at uh, French Creek. So I haven't really traveled too much. That's why next year I'd really like to play more, get out more. Yeah, mostly just the courses around here. Very cool. And it's like this this past year, I think we've covered you at least twice. Plus you were in the Wrestlers vs. Comedians uh, mm-hmm. video with us. Is this your first year competing? Yes, it is. I played one tournament last year, if you could call it a tournament. It was like the Western Pennsylvania College Championships or something. And uh, it was mostly just a fun thing to do. But yeah, yeah that's all I did last year. So. And, and it seems like this year you've progressed pretty quickly yeah. playing with the pros at this point. Yeah, yeah I played uh, the PFDO Amateur. I played an AM tournament out in Philadelphia. And then the next tournament after that that I played was the Johnny Sias championship in west virginia and actually cashed in it so i was like oh i'll go pro i guess <laughs> <laughs> yeah if you can throw that far why not right yeah. yeah you you've been you've been doing this for a year what what do you think are aspects of your game that you can improve on that you you want to improve on well i would definitely say inside the circle putting is number one it's uh it's just horrible right now i'll have days if i could have a day where i could putt good i feel like i could play with just about anybody but the putting just let me down. Other than that, my upshots of like 100 to 200 foot upshots have definitely been getting better. Still not quite where I'd like them to be, but right. also maybe uh, it would be nice to have a better, more consistent sidearm. It's something that kind of comes and goes for me. Absolutely, yeah. There's always something to be worked on in a game, mm-hmm. I find. With the off season coming up, is there anything that you plan on doing to improve those those putts those up shots any any routines or anything yeah i'll probably if there's if there's not too much snow on the ground i'll definitely try to make it out to a field every once in a while just stay loose with my throw and everything but mostly i'm gonna be putting a lot in my basement and uh they're running a putting league this year so i'll definitely try to make it out to that definitely need to work on the putting this off season that'll be priority number one you're mentioning that the off season you're going to be working on routines and things like that. Uh, my question for you is: next year, what do you see yourself doing? Do, are there any big events you really are looking forward to? Oh yeah, definitely. I'd like. I would. I'm definitely going to play the uh, PFDO. It'll be at NT in Pittsburgh, so I'd really like to play well there. Honestly, I don't really have any expectations for that. I just kind of want to play with somebody cool first round. But uh, <laughs> other than that, I'd kind of like to get up to Vermont and play the Green Mountain Championship. Oh, that that's going to be a cool. big one. I think yeah, I, that, a, a few guys from around here are going to go up and play that. Yeah, that course just looks amazing. I've always wanted to play there. But then other than that, not really. Probably just like Seth Burton 
it was an A tier, but then a bunch of B tiers and C tiers in the area. Definitely want to play more tournaments next year. Very cool. Did you have a favorite one that you did this year? I would say definitely my favorite this year is Johnny Sias. I really like that course down in Moundsville, West Virginia. I My first round was pretty bad. It shot a 73, which ended up being about a low 900s rated round. And then the next day I was just mad all day about that first round, and I used it to shoot a 60. Wow. I think it was three strokes off the course record, if I remember right. I'm not sure what the pin position was, but Ooh. yeah, it shot me up to from second to last to third. Wow. That's amazing. It may be out by the time this uh, podcast airs, but Vinny and I have been working on a little project to share with everybody. It was a little secret. We posted a little teaser up on our Facebook page, but uh, I didn't in the bag with Vinny, and it's uh, detailed in the bag. He goes through and shows us what he, how many discs that he has in his bag, which, what was the total count? Uh, I think it was 30. 29 or 30, Yeah. if you include the putters. Uh, I don't know. I'll have to count. It's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Quite a few. <laughs> and hopefully we didn't leave any out there. I think we got them all, right? <laughs> I think we got them all, yeah. I'll okay. find out one day whenever I see a line and don't have the disc for it. <laughs> right. <laughs> now, I noticed in, that, uh, in the bag, you had about, was it five different giants? Yes. Sometimes I'll carry up to six or seven, actually. Wow. Like if I go to play Slippery Rock... I'll carry six. What is it about that sixth one that the other five couldn't do? Well, it's it's crazy how there's a, you'll have giants that don't really have a lot of glide that I like to throw for lower skip shots, and then you'll have giants with a ton of glide that I like to throw big and high. So I could have two different giants of the same exact stability but different glides and throw different shots with them. Oh, Vinny, uh, we had you featured on our video, uh, Wrestlers vs. Comedians, and we kind of we didn't really give – a background to the wrestlers or the comedians of what to expect or what to see or you know what we would be doing other than we're going to play disc golf and some of them had no idea what the game even was what did you think going into that day and what did you think of the the players of the wrestlers and the comedians yeah going into that day i wasn't really sure how it was going to turn out like uh i wasn't sure the layout or what was going to happen but then i got there and it was definitely a lot of fun watching them uh play for the first time i kind of wish i had somebody film me the first time i played see how i was but uh yeah it was definitely a good idea to have that video yeah that video has been shared and and like hundreds of times and and thousands of views on facebook it's even been shared uh by the tdga and dynamic discs and uh it was really quite amazing to have this this little idea brian and i were discussing uh with along with dave one of the comedians and just to see that idea grow and to have you part of it it was pretty amazing day yeah it was pretty cool i saw that the pga shared it i thought that was definitely pretty cool so Vinny, it's been so great talking with you it, you know it's great to be out there and be able to watch you throw those long bombs and uh continue to play well here we wish you luck in the upcoming year you know, and we'd love to do a recap maybe uh, whenever you start doing some tournaments. Um, we can talk to you about how you're doing in the year and things like that, if that's okay. Oh, yeah. That sounds great. And thank you guys for all the work you guys do, bringing out some coverage, local area. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's really our pleasure. We really enjoy doing it. And um, we're glad that everybody in the community seems to be behind it as well. So. Um, thank you guys for listening, and we'll pitch it back to us in the studio. All right, we're back from that interview with Vinny Montanari. It was one of my favorites to, uh, to sit down with him. I've got to play with him a few rounds, and we obviously, as Brian mentioned, we had him as our guest for the Wrestlers vs. Comedians. He was our guest pro. And a lot of great tidbits in there. I really enjoyed hearing his first time, uh, how he went out and bought discs and what he chose the first time. It was really interesting. Yeah, I'll tell you what. I always learn something new whenever I'm out with him. And Vinny's always learning, too. So it's always a really great experience. But uh, what I wanted to mention was that Vinny and I did an In the Bag video, which is out on Facebook. We just released it uh, to today, but it'll be yesterday if you're listening to this on sunday and 
uh, we had a lot of fun doing that. So if you want to see what kind of discs Vinny throws, um, how far he throws them, how he throws them, you can definitely check that out on our Facebook or YouTube channel. Just check out In the Bag with Vinny Montanari. Yeah, it's a great video. It's super in-depth, Brian. You did a phenomenal job on it going through Vinny's bag. What do you have, a 30-some discs in there? And, and not only do yes. you talk about the discs in his bag, but you're showing the shots that he's using those discs for. So it's really informative. It's a great, I think it was about just over nine minutes. So if you want to check it out, it's Vinny's in the bag. Not too many other people can throw discs like that. Um, so it's, it's definitely something special to see. And, and Vinny, uh, like he was saying in the interview, accuracy is something that he's working on this year. And But man, it, can he just bomb discs? It's ridiculous. And speaking of local pros that are great to work with, uh, we have an interview here with Matt Rozier. Matt's a local disc golfer who um, is has been pro for the past uh, few years here. And uh, we were really excited to be able to talk with him on this. You may uh, remember Matt from uh, previous tournaments that we've done. Matt uh, is a phenomenal putter. A uh, great driver, so he, he's the all-around package, and he has been doing this for a few years, so um, he gives us a different perspective on his the game. So uh, we're really excited to be able to present this to you today. And this interview was you and Adam, who's been MIA for a few weeks, but uh, you two got to sit down with him. I was unable to make it, but uh, it turned out really nice. So let's, if you're ready, Brian, let's, let's jump into that one, too. All right. Let's jump right into it. Let's take a leap. Let's fall. Sure. Let's fall into it. Whoa. You always make me so awkward. Hey, guys. Thanks for listening to Disc Golf Examiner. It's Brian here. Uh, we're going to do an interview with local pro disc golfer matt rosier here in the pittsburgh area uh matt is with us uh as well as adam hey <laughs> and matt how are you doing today i'm doing awesome thanks for having me you've won two tournaments in the past two weeks <laughs> so uh we were very interested in sitting down with you um you won the oil city open last week and then uh this this previous week, you won the Steel City Slaughter Fest. So uh, we want to say congratulations, first thing, to you. We like to start these things off at the beginning. So uh, first question for you is, uh, how many years have you been playing disc golf, and what got you into it? Uh, I'd say about 11 years. Um, really, I don't remember much about starting to play, except a couple of friends from college said, let's go out and play disc golf uh, over at Shenley Park in, in Pittsburgh, um, over in Oakland near the Pitt and Carnegie Mellon campuses. And so uh, I went out and played with them. And I guess at some point I bought a starter pack, the, uh, the regular Innova starter pack. Um, I had a shark, uh, AVR, and a leopard. And I actually still have those three discs, the, uh, those three starter discs from 11 years ago. Uh, nice. I don't, yeah, I don't. I don't let anybody else throw those. They're uh, still. I need to get a display going and put that up on display. Right. <laughs> but uh, I I started started playing with those three, and um, at some point I got invited to the uh, the Shenley League, which is a handicap league here in Pittsburgh, and um, just started playing there for uh, for quite a while. Uh, kind of funny looking at all these uh, original scores from back 11 years ago and the guy was averaging up around 62 63 and if, if you've ever played Chenley that's that's pretty pretty high up there now and I think mm -hmm. now that when I go back and play there I'm averaging down around a 48 so I kind of worked my way up through the ranks yeah how how long did it take you to be able to throw the bombs that you're able to throw now did it take 11 years or have you been yeah, it to took a long time. I yeah, think it's funny. Uh, still playing Shenley after after the, all this time, uh, I still remember a couple holes where where I remember the first time that I 
I threw that starter pack leopard uh, past a certain tree out there. And now, now when I go out there, I think that tree is about 150 feet down the fairway. And so I can <laughs> jump putt it past that tree now. So it, it really took quite a while. Um, I, I didn't really start playing tournaments until 2011. I think it was the, uh, the first couple tournaments I played. Um, started out with a Pittsburgh Flying Disc Open there in 2011 and kind of started playing intermediate then. And, that, was, like said, that was a big year, wasn't it? We had a lot of uh, pros out. I, I think 2012, we had the, uh, the National Tour event came through Pittsburgh and um, volunteered there and, and saw, saw all the pros come out to play. Um, but that was, that was 2012 was the first year that I really started playing a lot of tournaments. Um, I, think I played 12 or so tournaments that year. And that's when I, I really got the bug and, and just kind of played every, every tournament I could. Um, just like I said, start, starting out an intermediate and, and kind of trying to work my way up. Matt, how many rated rounds have you played this year? I know you've played a ton of tournaments. Um, well, at the next update, I actually should pass over 100 rated rounds uh, on my rating. So uh, I believe I'm, I'm right around 30 tournaments for the year. Wow. So I've, I've done that the last couple of years. Um, in, uh, in 2015, I was actually overseas in China for a couple of months, so I I didn't quite get the uh, 25 to 30 I usually do, but I think about since since 2013, I've I've tried to do 25 to, to 30 tournaments a year. Will you be slowing down next year, or foot on the gas mm -hmm. and full nope, tournaments? Nope, it'll for... it'll be the uh, the usual schedule. Um, I I really enjoy the competition. I love traveling all over the U.S. Um, I think in, in 2014, I actually, I played a tournament in 14 different states uh, along the kind of Northeast and the Midwest. And, and I, I just really love traveling and love the competition. So it's, it's not something I'm going to slow down and stop doing as long as I can keep on doing it. And how about this year alone? Uh, do, you, do you keep track of how many tournaments uh, you've placed in this year? Um, I, I kind of know about it. Uh, I, I've moved up and down between advanced and open this year. Uh, back in 2014, I was playing a lot of open tournaments to try to qualify for pro worlds in 2015, which was held here in Pittsburgh. Um, but after not doing too well of a showing in 2014, I kind of moved back down into advanced and 2015. And then, um, I wanted to play am worlds and the united states amateur championships one more time in 2016 so i i just kind of stayed amateur and kind of bounced around between amateur and pro uh, this year so i i believe um after this past weekend i've cashed in eight pro tournaments and then um i think i've won uh seven advanced tournaments this year so that was that was kind of the uh, my last hurrah in advance before moving up to open. Awesome. And so, give us an idea of what you're throwing here. You you do you throw specifically trilogy discs, or do you mix it up? Yeah, about uh, three years ago, I think I had been throwing a mixed bag. I actually had all uh, eight companies in the bag, um, anywhere from Vibram. Uh, I think the only one I didn't have was the uh, MVP just because it wasn't out when I started making the bag. But um, I didn't really have a cohesive bag, so I just kind of had a bunch of discs that I liked throwing. So in uh, 2013, I decided to make a full bag, made sure that I had an understable to overstable mid, fairway, and distance driver. And so that's when I, I kind of just decided to uh, make a trilogy bag. Um, I really liked the, the discs that they had. Uh, through the fuse, I actually got my first two aces with a fuse at Shenley Park, and then I uh, really liked the pure. So that was kind of the base of the bag. And then since then, um, really picked up the Saint Pro is one of my my favorite discs to throw. So those those three are really a staple in the bag. And I think right now I carry around three Saint Pros and two pures, uh, and that's 
since since I made the bag there in 2013, it's it stayed pretty consistent. You know, actually, we should probably do an in the bag at some point with you, and you know, go over what you have in your bag and what you throw for certain shots and things like that. So, would you be up for something like that at some point? Uh, releasing all my secrets to the world. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> when will the Matt Rozier signature swan be a thing? The swan two. Yeah, I don't know. I I uh, when I when I started out putting, I obviously had the uh, the AVR from that starter pack, and then I switched to the Wizard. Um, probably putted with the Wizard for a couple of years. Ended up switching over to the Vibram Summit. Is a pretty understable low rim putter, and putted with that for quite a few years. So when I I made the trilogy bag in 20, 2013, I was really looking to to change the putter, the plastic of the Vibram just didn't really fit with my hand right. I found the Swan was an understable, low profile, no bead putter. And I picked that up and have been putting with that for three years now. Actually, the uh, the one Swan, the pink Swan that I usually putt with now has been the same putter that I've had for three years. I, I had a twin, but I, I went out to Maple Hill and Fortunately, tossed it in the water on hole uh, 14 on, on a putt and couldn't get it back. Kind of rotating a, a new putter in to try to get it as beat up as my three-year-old Swan too. But um, I, I really love the Swans. They, I like the really glidey, understable putter. I, I don't have to put a lot of effort into throwing it far, and I, I don't like jump putting. It's just too many move, too much movement. So that's Swan too. Uh, they want to give me a disc. That's fine. <laughs> yeah, you can see some pretty awesome putting uh, from Matt at the Still City Classic. Uh, we had some clips up from that where uh, Matt, <laughs> in particular, hit a really, really long putt. If anybody remembers, uh, on hole 11, we have a clip out. Um, so definitely go back, uh, check out some of the clips from that tournament. And uh, definitely check out that putt for Matt. I think it was like a 70, 75 footer <laughs> that you landed on hole 11 at uh, Deer Lakes. So the season's kind of winding down. The tournaments are coming to an end. And you, you recently won two tournaments. Congratulations uh, for that, by the way. The Oil City Open and the uh, Steel City Slaughter Fest. And I got to say, you know, that's that's really impressive to have two victories in two weeks. Uh, how's that making you feel right now? Oh, thank you. Uh, yeah, it feels great. I mean, I've been kind of plateaued there in, in ratings for, for quite a while. And this year things have really seemed to click. So it, it feels great to get a couple of open wins under my belt. These are the, my first two open wins. Um, I'm actually on a pretty good streak here. I've had five straight caches, but these are the the only five caches in open that I've had starting with, um, with Mike Soltz, uh, knock and mix in hoodoo out there and, um, out in Eastern PA. So that was, that was the first cache I had uh, a couple weeks ago and just kind of ro- riding a, a good play along. Awesome. And so the season is winding down. Uh, there's probably, I think we were talking, you know, not that many more tournaments to go around here. Um, do you have any off season, um, strategies or routines that you go through, uh, so that you're able to make those crazy putts? Yeah. The, uh, the main thing is the practice putting. Um, I'm a, I'm a big hockey fan, so I'll, I'll usually watch all, all the Sabres games, uh, Buffalo Sabres fan, but, uh, every intermission is about 15, 17 minutes long. So I'll jump up and I have, uh, almost probably 25 to 30 feet here in the apartment that I can practice putting. So I'll jump up and do 15 minutes of putting practice and then catch the next uh, period of hockey and then jump up at the second intermission. And that's, that's really good because you aren't, you aren't really getting tired of all the practice putting in that case, you're just doing little 15 minute bits and you you can really get into a routine then. And really that's the the main thing that I do. Um, I know every every winter I say that I want to redo my form. Uh, there's a, a lot of the pros throw quite a bit further than I do, so it, it would be really nice to get a couple extra 50 feet out of it. But I've been kind of doing the same thing for 11 years, so it's hard to teach an old dog new tricks. But that's that's definitely something I'd like to do for the um, 
for this winter as, as well as trying to throw a forehand. Uh, I don't think in any of the videos you have of me, you've ever seen me throw a forehand. It's, it's always the summer. So uh, that's something else that I'd kind of like to, to develop to try to bring my game to the next level. So uh, I know I typically will go out in the winter time and throw whenever it's not too bad out there. Do you like to get out at all and, and throw some discs in the, in the snow? Yeah, definitely. Um, I'll, I'll usually play all the way through the winter. Uh, but now I guess with a, with a time change, it's really hard. So it's usually uh, Saturdays and Sundays is the only time. And you don't really get into a rhythm if you're only playing once or twice a week. So it's, kind of hard to to maintain that and and even with all the snow out there you, you're generally wearing a bunch of layers so your your form's going to be a little messed up than what you're used to playing in the summer so I, I think it's more just to to satisfy the bug of getting out there and playing whenever i can any big notable touring plans for next year what's on the agenda i'll um so since i've now cashed in pro uh i won't be going to am worlds or am nats next year so those are those are off the table um i'll probably make just my my usual swings to eastern pennsylvania probably down to delaware i really like playing at iron hill so i try to make it down to nearly every tournament there but i think the Probably the only big tournament that I'm looking to play next year is uh, trying to get up to Smuggler's Notch, um, but haven't really looked too much into that. So I'm not sure there'll be as much traveling as I've done this year and the, the past couple of years going out to Am Worlds and USA DGC, but I'll definitely be hitting up the road and once again, playing all over Pennsylvania and Ohio and West Virginia, New York. That'll be pretty awesome. Hopefully we can get some more uh, coverage of you this year. Uh, just uh, thanks a bunch for coming out, Brian. The, the coverage has been great. And um, yeah, hope to see you out there some more. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm having a, a lot of fun. You know, I love disc golf and I love photography and video. So anytime I can combine the two, I'm happy to do it. So and uh, it's always great to see you guys making those awesome putts and drives. So uh, it really gets me psyched up to do this type of thing. So thank you, Matt. So that's our interview with. Matt Rozier, local Pittsburgh pro. Uh, if you'd like to hear some more stuff from Matt, uh, Matt, is there any place that they can contact you uh, or keep in touch with you? Um, Facebook. Uh, I think that's pretty much the only social media I do. Um, I know I'm friends with a lot of people that I play with and met through my travel. So look me up on there. All right. And thanks so much for joining us again. You guys have a good day. All right, we're back with that interview from Matt Rozier. Brian and Adam had the chance to sit down with him a few weeks back. Uh, we got to put it into this episode uh, with a nice way to contrast uh, with Vinny Montanari, our first interview in the show. I, I really enjoyed hearing his stories and his approach to the game. Yeah, absolutely. And Matt's, Matt's such a great guy. Um, we're really lucky to have him around the area and him willing to be a part of the things that we do here. It was It's always great to talk with him. He offers such a unique perspective on the game for a lot of the guys in the area. He's very highly regarded. So, uh, and I think you have uh, you've been you're going to work on something specifically with Matt coming up. Yeah, Matt and I have talked about doing an in the bag. We're now that sort of the tournament season is winding down. We want to get other videos and content out. So um, we did the in the bag with Vinny, and then um, we're going to try to get one here with Matt. And hey, if you're in the area, if you're a, a pro, if you'd like to get in the bag done, we would very much uh, like to accommodate you with that. So definitely reach out to us. We'd be interested in doing that this winter. This winter is coming. This winter is coming. Well, that's going to wrap it up for us tonight. This is episode number eight in the Disc Golf Examiner podcast series. We hope you enjoyed this episode. As all of our episodes, we're trying to bring... Uh, the lifestyle of disc golf. We're trying to bring the scene to life uh, just through storytelling and questions and just general conversation. So if you are enjoying it, you know, please feel free to leave us a review or a rating on iTunes, Stitcher, wherever you're listening to this. Uh, we would really appreciate that. You want to send it home? All right. Thanks so much for listening to Disc Golf Examiner, guys. We really appreciate the listen. Remember to keep going out there and banging those chains. Holla!